story with lymphedema, simplistically stated, is that it's a, a disease of women, and it mainly affects their lower half, and it's a uh, abnormal deposition of fat, and it starts to occur around puberty. We think it's hormonally related because of the association with puberty, and with the fact that it's also seen in around menopause. Postmenopausal women get it, but you certainly can get it throughout life, and it creates a terrible disproportion for these patients. And to make things worse, even if you diet and exercise, you cannot eliminate the fat of lip lipidema. It's as if it has some kind of specialized status and it won't respond to the usuals. We started using liposuctioning for lipidema about 10 years ago. And we noticed, as Brorson taught us, that the cardinal finding was fatty deposition. People were looking at these pictures of limbs and they didn't recognize that there was a massive hypertrophy of fat. And that as that got worse, it was irreversible. And that you couldn't reduce a limb without recognizing the fat and doing something about it. And although various types of compression, manual lymphatic drainage can help patients, it can never eliminate these permanent fibrotic collections of fat. So liposuctioning, which was popularized by Brorson, was a major advance and it has allowed us to remove almost all of the fat without causing some compromise to the blood supply of the skin. And these patients do well afterwards. But the more advanced the accumulations, the worse the prognosis because they get a secondary lymphedema from these accumulations of fat. The worldwide problem is, is uh, is very serious. The only uh, drawback is that lipedema won't kill you. Uh, that's a plus and a minus. It, it, it's like lymphedema. We used to say it'll ruin your life, but it won't put you in the grave uh, because it doesn't. It's not a, 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 a disease that has a mortality. But now there's a recognition that it's not just life and death. It's quality of life and activities of daily living. That's an enormous problem that we have to address. We need the research advances, and we need to give them, we need to extend the current treatment that we have, which is pretty good. It could be much better. But at least we can help some women by reducing limb growth, making them more comfortable, increasing their mobility, and giving them a more productive day, I think, than they're having right now. So I would like to see first lipedema taught worldwide. I think every academic center at the least should uh, be uh, devoting the, its energies to this particular area, should assign people who have an interest and a background, should teach it in the medical schools with the lectures and inspire students to want to do it. And that's how it will advance. And I think that's what's happening. It's certainly beginning to happen everywhere. The lymphatics are often called the orphans of the vascular system. They are neither arterial nor venous, but they develop with the vascular system. So you are dealing with orphans, and orphans need attention. And I think finally they're getting the, their, what they need, and it's beginning to change. There's no question uh, that we're seeing lymphatics are involved in everything. They are involved in every cancer that we treat, and uh, they are uh, appearing in most of the operations, uh, that we're doing and we're aware of them and we want to protect them and we quickly recognize complications of lymphatic disorders. We need to understand why the fat grows. Is it a reversible pro uh, process? It might be. Many things are reversible that were thought previously to not be. What are the growth factors in, in lymphedema fluid? How do, the, how do they affect these cells? Are these fat cells identical to, to the usual fat in the body? They seem to be resistant to certain processes. We mentioned diet and exercise don't affect them. Why? What's unique about these cells? They look like fat cells under a microscope. Histologically, we call them fat cells. They're adult adipose cells. Why aren't they responding to the usual uh, methods of treatment that we're aware of? So there's a lot of work here, but how exciting to be in the forefront of it and uh, at the bottom uh, of the process where there's so much that can be done. 
we are seeing more advances in the last 10 years than we saw in the previous three, three or four decades. So I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic.